The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain development of plot, subplot, conflict, character, and role of narrator where relevant. Hi, today's lesson is about the narrator or the narrator voice in short stories. A narrator can be like a fly on the wall, able to observe everything but not really a part of the action. Or a narrator can be an active participant or one of the characters in a story. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define narrative voice, discuss how narrative voice contributes to the impact of a short story. When writing a novel, a play, or a short story, a writer puts together her ideas, the plot, or storyline. She decides on what characters will be in the story. She still has one more very important thing to do. She must decide on what technique to use to tell the story. To get some inside information on how writers decide what kind of narrator is best for their story, we spoke to an author. kinds of narrators have advantages and disadvantages so it depends a lot on the story that you want to tell. The omniscient or the, um, uh, the unattached point of view is where you, you're like a sort of godlike creature and you're looking down on all the people you're writing on. That has big advantages in that you can look inside anybody's head that you want. You can tell the reader what anybody um, is thinking or feeling at that time. You're explaining for the reader how everybody is feeling. So the, the reader doesn't have to interpret. So, so in some ways they don't get to feel those emotions the same way um, as say the first person narrator where, okay, you're feeling what that one person is feeling. You're inside that one person's head, but that one person is telling you what they are seeing. So you having to interpret from other people's reactions, rather like real life. We're looking out at the world and interpreting how other people are thinking and what they're feeling at that time. And that um, gives the reader the chance to feel very much part of that scene, part of the story. Um, and that's why the third person, although it has the advantage of you being able to explain how everybody else is thinking and feeling, um, it perhaps makes the reader feel that they're kind of looking down on the scene, slightly emotionally detached from it. It's less like real life. I think different writers prefer different using different voices and sometimes just the story that you're telling will dictate what kind of um, narrative voice you, you want to use. I like using first person because I like to climb inside somebody and I like to be able to say what they are thinking and feeling and I like to give that, that sense of other people relating to them and also, you know, first person is interesting because your narrator can be reliable or unreliable. So I think you just have to get used to um, uh, the, the narrative voice that you're using and you have to stick to it. That's the rule. If you start in one, you can't jump out of it halfway through. There is a lot of thought that goes into the choice of a narrator or narrative voice. It's not just an accident. It is a writing technique. <laughs> Technique refers to the method in which one does something. The author must decide how she is going to tell the story. Every story must be told from a certain point of view. The writer must decide which point of view is best for her story. The point of view is given by the narrator of the story. Deciding on the style of narration is an important decision for the author to make as it will change the way that the readers react to the story. The narrator is the person who is telling the story. As we mentioned in the introduction, you get the kind of narrator who is a participant in the story, and you get the type of narrator that is like a fly in the wall. There are specific terms that are used to describe these two types of narrator. We talk about the first person narrator and the third person or omniscient narrator. The first person narrator is a character in the story who tells the story from his or her own point of view. The narrator will use first-person pronouns like I, me, 
my, mine, because the first person narrator will be describing events that he or she was either involved in or saw happening. The value of this technique is that the narrator tells the reader everything as if it were happening right in front of him or her. As readers, this can make us feel like we were also part of the action or that we at least heard about it from someone who was there. Obviously, the first person narrator will not know anything that he or she does not experience personally. In other words, the narrator can describe his or her own thoughts or feelings about what is happening, but has no way of climbing into the heads of the other characters and describing what they are thinking or feeling. The narrator can also only describe events that he or she witnessed or was part of. If the narrator was not there for something, he or she cannot tell the reader about it because the first person narrator doesn't know everything. There can be an interesting turn of events where suddenly something happens that no one expected or another character acts in an unexpected way. A first person narrator describes events as if they were happening in front of him or her does not know about anything that he or she does not experience personally, can only describe events that he or she witnessed or was part of. The other kind of narrator is a third person or omniscient narrator. Omniscient means all-knowing or knowing everything. In this style of storytelling, the author has a godlike knowledge of everything that happens and is able to enter the minds of all her characters and to tell us, the readers, what the characters feel and think. She tells us everything she wants us to know. The omniscient narrator is therefore infallible or not capable of making mistakes. We trust and believe what we are told by the omniscient narrator. Such narration uses pronouns like he, him, his, she, her, hers, they, them their, theirs. Third person pronouns like these are used instead of I, me, and my, because the omniscient narrator is not part of the story. Instead, this type of narrator tells us about events that he or she is not actually involved in. So remember that an omniscient narrator has a godlike knowledge of everything that happens, knows what other characters are thinking and feeling, does not make mistakes. So, if an omniscient narrator is not actually part of the story, then what is the value of using this kind of narrator? Discuss it with the person sitting next to you and see if you can think of why an author would choose to use an omniscient narrator. Using an omniscient narrator can distance us from a character and so make us question or criticize a character. In other words, we may be less likely to agree with a character when the story is not being told from his or her point of view. Or using an omniscient narrator can invite intimacy or closeness and so make us identify closely with a character. This will happen when we feel as if the narrator has described the character's thoughts and emotions so well that we feel as if we know the character in the same way as we know our friends. person narrator, third person narrator, or omniscient narrator. It is important that you know these terms and how narration works in stories as it affects the way in which a story is told. To illustrate examples of the different types of narration and to prepare you for the questions on narration that you may have to answer, we are going to look at two extracts. One is from the suit and should be familiar to you. The other is new. Here are examples of the type of question you may have to answer on narration in a literature test or exam. State what kind of narrator is used. Give evidence of the technique of narration. Discuss the effect of the narration on the reader. Here's the first extract. It is from a story called The Ghost by Richard Hughes. This is the opening paragraph. As we read it, see if you can work out what type of narration has been used. He killed me quite easily by crashing my head on the cobbles. Bang! Lord, what a fool I was. All my hate went out with that first bang. A fool to have kicked up a fuss just because I'd found him with another woman. And now he was doing this to me. Bang! 
that was the second one, and with it, everything went out. Do you remember what the questions were? State what kind of narrators used. Give evidence of technique or narration. Discuss the effect of the narration on the reader. This time, we'll answer them together. But pay attention, as you will need to be able to answer questions like this on your own. So the first question is, state what kind of narrator is used. This is a first-person narrator. We assume it is a woman who has been murdered. The second question asks us to give evidence of the technique of narration. She uses personal pronouns such as I, me, and my. The first two questions were quite simple. However, things get a bit trickier with the third question. Discuss the effect of the narration on the reader. A question like this would be worth quite a few marks as you would have to provide an answer as well as some evidence from the text to support your answer. Let's give it a try. Look at the opening words. He killed me quite easily by crashing my head on the cobbles. We are quite surprised when we realize that the story is being told by a murdered woman. At first we think, this is nonsense. A story can't be told by a dead person. Then remember that the title of the story is The Ghost. We think, okay, it's the ghost telling the story. If we continue to read the second paragraph, ideas would be confirmed. It is the woman who is talking and she is a ghost. Here is the second paragraph. My sleek young soul must have glistened somewhat in the moonlight, for I saw him look up from the body in a fixed sort of way. That gave me an idea. I would haunt him. All my life I'd been scared of ghosts, and now I was one myself. I could get a bit of my own back. He never was. He said there weren't such things as ghosts. Oh, weren't there? Soon I'd teach him. From what she says about herself, her lover and her plans, what sort of woman does this seem to be? We can determine that she regrets that she has lost her life because of the fuss that she made when she caught her husband with another woman. When she was alive, she was superstitious and frightened of the supernatural. She wants revenge. She has been hurt and now she wants to get back at her husband. She plans to terrify the man and make his life miserable. Look at how pleased she is with the plan to haunt him. She really is quite nasty. But remember that we said about the first person narrator? Obviously the first person narrator will not know anything that he or she does not experience personally. And this can make for interesting turns of events. We asked the grade 11 learner to answer the third question. Discuss the effect of narration on the reader. This is the answer that they wrote. She writes, The narration is at first surprising to the reader as it means that the story is being told by a dead person. However, because the story is about a ghost, this form of narration is possible. Because the dead woman is able to tell the story from her own point of view, we are able to learn various things about her and we can identify with her feelings of regret and fear. The narration, however, also shows us that the dead person has a nasty side. As the dead woman does not know everything, we also realize that there might be some unexpected events in the story. Wow, that was quite a comprehensive answer. But it also shows us just how much influence the choice of narration has over how we as readers interpret a story. I also hope you notice how the points that Jade made were backed up with evidence from the text. It is important that you do this as it shows that you can support your answer. Also, this is an important hint. Giving evidence is where you will get most of your marks from when answering literature questions. Here is another extract to analyze. You'll recognize it from the suit. It is a scene just after Philemon gets home to find Matilda in bed with her lover. After a while, the convulsions of her shoulders ceased. She saw a smug man with an odd and meaningless inscrutability in his eyes. He spoke to her with very little noticeable emotion, if anything, with a flutter of humor. We have a visitor, Tilly. His mouth curved ever so slightly. I'd like him to be treated with the greatest of consideration. He will eat every meal with us and share all we have. Since there is no spare room, he'd better sleep in here. But the point is, Tilly, that you will meticulously look after him. If he vanishes or anything happens to him, a shaft of evil shot from his eye. Matilda, I'll kill you. Here are the same questions as before, only this time we're going to answer them in relation to the extract from the suit that we have just read. 
State what kind of narrator is used to give evidence of the technique of narration. Discuss the effect of the narration on the reader. Before watching the rest of this lesson, you might want to first try and answer the questions by yourself. How well did you manage the questions? Compare your answers to mine. State what kind of narrator is used. This is a third person or omniscient narrator. Give evidence of the technique of narration. The author talks about both characters as he and she. The narrator is observing and commenting on the characters. Discuss the effect of the narration on the reader. Aha! This is the trickier question, and the one that would probably count for the most marks if this were a test or exam. Let's look at the passage again. The narrator sees and knows everything, which is why he can say that Matilda sees a smug man. This is her perspective of Philemon. But at the same time, the narrator can also give Philemon's perspective. When he talks about shaft of evil, that is a look in Philemon's eye. We are able to realize just how angry he is. The omniscient narrator can be fair to both characters, the sobbing frightened woman and the angry heartbroken man. To check that you know the difference between an omniscient and a first person narrator, so that you will be able to identify what type of narration has been used in the short story you are studying in class, here's today's task. Your task is to copy down and complete the following table. In this lesson, you have learned about narrative voice and point of view, and you have seen how technique influences a reader. Why not see how this applies to the book you're reading at the moment? A really interesting thing to do, which is actually quite a fun little exercise if you're interested in writing, is to take a story, say take a story that you would normally um, tell somebody, a story about what happened to you today. Write it in the, in the first person, see how it comes out. Then, um, change it, take the same story and write it again from an omniscient point of view. Now you'll be able to see into the heads of the other people that, um, that you were speaking to and the other people that you were dealing with during your day. And you'll see how differently that story comes out and it will give you a real sense of how you can play with different points of view to give you a different kind of story and which narrative point of view will suit which story. In the next lesson, we'll look at themes and message in short stories. Until next time, goodbye.